Boozed and Confused is a comedy and weird topic podcast. Adult language may be used probably by me. While our episode topics may be educational in nature, we are not responsible if your children start dropping the F-bomb to their kindergarten class. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, everybody. Oh, hey. Haven't seen you uh, all year. (laughs) Happy New Year, everyone. We back. We accidentally skipped last week, but that's fine because you're getting the same content just a couple days into the new year, which gives you plenty of time to prepare for all the fucked up stuff that Nostradamus and Baba Vanga have predicted for 2023. They don't miss. They just keep going. They just keep going. I thought they were dead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the key to successful predictions is making them as vague as possible, kind of like horoscopes and psychic readings and all that good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I knew you'd say that. (laughs) Before we get into today's episode, A couple of housekeeping items, and if you know the drill, you could just fast forward like 45 seconds to 60 seconds. I don't know. Whatever. Um, So the first one is we're on all your favorite social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. For now, while Twitter is still a thing, I don't really know what's going to happen. What did Baba Venga say about that one? I don't think she talked about Twitter, unfortunately, but I wish she did. Or if they gave some sort of prediction about like what stocks I should invest in this year, um, because my AMC stock is around $4, and I think I entered around 13 to 17 So. Um, so you're saying that there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, you're saying I'm that. still holding. We're holding the line. Still holding. Hold the line. Yeah. Um, but uh, the next one is if you like the show and you want to support us, the best way that you could do with that is by leaving us a review and or subscribing or following whatever, uh, you know, wherever you get your podcasts. It's great. I appreciate it. Uh, Matt doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> so. I, I hardly use uh, the social media. All I do is send memes to like my three chat groups. Yeah, it's great. And then uh, I send you things on Instagram that just sit uh, usually. And I'm like, hey, did you watch that video? And you're like, no. They're good. It's good content. I said good stuff. I think I've sent you like eight. Yeah, a few things. To, to ten yeah. un- uh-huh. unanswered It's not things. unanswered. I like it. I double tap and I, mm. it means I like it. Mm. See, I, I always hold down the response and then I. I don't have that a, option on my phone I for some reason. I put a picture yeah. Like I make the emoji match the content yeah. of yeah. the video. I don't know why I don't have that option. If anyone is uh more tech savvy than I, uh hit me up. Let me know why I don't have that option on Instagram. Um so besides that, the other way that you could support us is by leaving us a review. Um, so if you leave a review and you take a screenshot and you send it to us, we'll send you some boost and confused stickers in the mail for free. For free. For free. Anywhere uh, in the world, we've tried to, to get it to you. Whether it's actually reached its destination is out of our hands. <laughs> yeah, we've tried. Um, and the last one. What are you drinking? What am I drinking? I'm drinking? drinking a Smithix. It's so good. Um, I'm obsessed with Smithix and it's always a nice little treat. What are you drinking? It's Guinness. Yeah, of course it's Guinness. It's Guinness. This... We, we bought the Irish sampler pack or whatever from Costco, uh, because one, there weren't really a ton of options and two, it's just so good. Yeah, it's good. My, my chief complaint, if I could even call it that is like that it's in a bottle and I can't get that cool like super loud whoosh, whoosh, opening oh, and, and then like, like the little gets, fizz and the, the ball yeah, the, yeah. yeah but Costco finally carries the the like 24 to like 30 pack of for those for now yeah for now and like if I had to only drink one beer in my entire life it would be Guinness amazing it would be guinness yeah forever yeah it, absolutely. i could i could drink this like every day you should makes me strong <laughs> pints of guinness make you strong um all right well we should probably 
get into it. How was your 2022? How was everybody's 2022? Ooh. Ooh. Ah, uh, uh, I don't know what to say about this year. Yeah, struggle uh, all around. Um, I'd give it like a 6 out of 10. I I would give my ooh, my rating system for th- this past year is so skewed. There's so many things I could I could vote on or, or you know like uh, rate. You know, like I would give the producer like a ten out of ten. Oh yeah, great, love the, the producer. It's great working with the producer. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but I'd give so many other parts of my life like maybe a three out of ten. Yeah, I also agree with that. Yeah, so like I'd say like between that that one solid ten out of ten. And everything else, I think the average would be about like a four, four point seven. That is a four point seven. We'll unpack that later. We're not going to (laughs) unpack that. We're not talking in the car. Well, uh, let's do a little reflection on what twenty twenty two predictions were from Baba Vanga and Nostradamus. Let's hear it. Um, so just very high level. You could always go back and listen to our episode. It's episode sixty six. Um, but. They were, one, an increase in catastrophes and more effects of climate change, which I think is pretty obvious uh, and I would agree with. The next one was from Nostradamus. He said, fire do I see that from the sky shall fall. So it was maybe like some sort of asteroid impact. Um, Did it mean we were all going to go extinct? To my knowledge, we haven't yet. Uh, But Maybe it's also an interpretation of something that's not universe created and it's man made. Yeah. So maybe it's like the barrage of missiles uh, between Russia and Ukraine. There you go. See, you just make it so fucking vague. It can apply to anything. We're not extinct. We're just dead on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> that's so depressing um the next one was from baba vanga she predicted that there was a lethal virus like previously frozen in siberia that would be released because of climate change to my knowledge i don't know that anything else is really sweeping right now aside from all the respiratory illnesses but that is such a fear that i have it's it's one of those fears where i'm like oh that asteroid is going to hit any second now. Oh, yeah. there it is. Yep, there it is. Uh, that that bacteria is going to get out of the ice <laughs> any second now. Just a ticking time bomb. Um, the next one was from Nostradamus. So, blue head shall white head harm in such degree as France's good to both shall air amount. And that was um, like a theme of the invasion of France by a threat from the east. Um, which is interesting because obviously Russia has invaded Ukraine. Uh, there's a lot of concern that that could spill over into other countries. Has it touched France yet? No. Um, but this alluded to maybe like World War Three or terrorism, uh, or anything in between. The next one was, uh, higher prices, a failing economy and people going hungry. Uh, at the point of which we did last year's episode, we were already seeing inflation. We were seeing, uh, the economy start to, uh, yeah, um, yeah. and people going hungry, which is definitely a recurring theme. Uh, Nostradamus predicted the rise of AI. Shut up. Yeah. Which, uh, kind of creepy, especially considering how much we've talked about AI this year. There's like chat, chat GPT, if you want to call it that. We just did an episode on Lenza. Um, we did an AI wrote this episode episode. I mean, yeah, silly. there was just a lot. So definitely interesting. The last three were Baba Vanga, alien encounter on Earth, locusts in India, and a loss of sense of reality. That so, last one hits hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know she made our personal predictions, but that's fine. Um, so I guess maybe we could go through what 2023 has in store. Let's see what the alleged year <sighs> allegedly has. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start it out really light. No, um, this, is, this is not gonna be light. This is gonna be heavy. We're gonna start it out really light with something from Baba Vanga. Um, so she had a vision predicting um, a biological attack that would be launched by a developed country. Uh, so like biowarfare, if you will. 
obviously, uh, there's a biological weapons convention of the UN that has banned weapons of mass destruction. Uh, some countries could just be like, fuck you. I'm not part of your little team. I'm not part of your little tea party. Um, cough, cough, Russia. <laughs> Um, and obviously we don't really know what nation maybe Baba Vanga had in mind, but, um, you know, could it be like viruses? Could it be like, like, um, mutation Yeah. Mm -hmm. where like, I, I get like a third, a third nipple, a second head. Oh, I was going to say something useful, like a third arm would would be be great. Right in the middle of my chest. Yeah. Oh, well maybe like a little off to the side. No, it's got to be centered. It's got to be, it's gotta be centered. That'd Otherwise, be I'd be very upset. Um, yeah, so that's kind of interesting. And I'd be curious to see where that goes. Because with the uh, war in Ukraine uh, from the aggressor Russia, uh, that has been a really big concern so far. And I think it's been discussed a lot. And um, yeah, U.S. is definitely concerned about it. As is, you know, the rest of I fucking think, Europe. I, yeah, I, th- I think. <laughs> We're, we're a little far. We're super away. far from it, but yeah. it's it's very scary, especially the whole uh, what's Russia going to do next kind of the question. Yeah. Like, yeah. What are they going to do, do now? Yeah, there's a lot of um, like he said, she said of people who are allegedly close to Putin who have talked about why he started this war and what kind of mental condition he's in right now. So I think that's uh, leading some of the bigger fear of like, oh, what's going to happen? Yeah. Uh, So going to tie in with this one, a prediction from Nostradamus, um, also keeping it very light, a prediction about World War Three, which so he said seven months, great war, people dead through evil. So to be fair, depending on who you talk to, there's a lot of opinions that we are already in the middle of World War Three. It's just maybe not to... um, what history would show as World War One and World War Two, where it's every country fighting, sending troops. Uh, you could argue that the U.S. is involved in World War Three, but instead of sending troops, we're sending a fuckload of our weapons, like weapons and money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. I mean, just hearing what they were doing with Ukraine, like um, giving them was it like the Patriot missile? Yeah, but they yeah. like God nerf it a little bit, though. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Russia says, oh, but if it can do that, then it's an act of war on us. Uh-huh. Even though I, I just, so many hairs need to be split. Yeah. yeah. It's a world involved war for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it'll be interesting kind of on the other side of this once the war is over. Uh, historians looking back on it to see what we actually decide to call it. Or... Hopefully there's no escalation that emulates one and two, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. For each of their own reasons, it was, they're both like horrendous, but also the technology we have now is so different and yeah. it would look different. I imagine. It would look very different. I mean, I feel like I've, I've seen so many posts on uh, the Reddit uh, talking about how crucial drones have become to the Ukrainian soldiers. Um, to you know obviously they uh they probably have an upper hand now with the supplies and aid that they're getting but um obviously that's not unlimited so i think they have to be much more precise with their actions hence drones have changed the game um in war which is very bizarre because you would just imagine drones being like some guy flying it in a park and then his 10 year old kid gets it stuck in a fucking tree um and then it's gone forever yeah. yeah, no, I've been seeing those um, Ukraine drone videos where, like, they drop little. Yeah, isn't little that bombs insane? Technology is fucking other crazy. Soldiers. It's absolutely insane. It's, like, we are sitting here in the United States from our warm house watching war videos hours after they happen. Yeah, crazy, crazy yeah. shit. Yeah. Well, this next one is actually less serious. It's. A little more fun or funny, depending on your interpretation. So this one is from Nostradamus. Um, Celestial fire on the royal edifice. So is a meteor going to hit Buckingham Palace? (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Or is the meteor uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, who have a documentary on Netflix right now? (laughs) 
That, I happened, mean, it, that it could, happened last year, though. <laughs> Um, it could also be, uh, maybe this prediction is a little out of time because the queen died. Um, so the, the, what do you call it? The changing of the guard, if you will. Mm. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Unless, uh, what's his name? It's not Andrew. Andrew's the, the Oh, diddler. we don't talk about um, Andrew. William? We don't talk about no, Charles. Andrew. Charles. The, Charles. The yeah. King. God save the king. Yeah. So king there's- King sausage fingers. <laughs> The, well, okay, yeah, I'm happy you brought that up because a lot of people after Charles took over, I think he has congestive heart failure. Um, if I read that correctly, or hopefully that wasn't from like a gossipy, mm. <laughs> like the sun or something, uh, I try to avoid those sources. But I think a lot of people were theorizing that if he even made it throughout, you know, a year or two um, because of his current health condition, they'd be amazed. Really? So if oh. you were to die and then two die within, you know, a year or two, that'd be fucking crazy. Another king. Like I was just I was just saying, not just, but like the odds of us seeing another queen of England are so low. So slim. So slim. So slim. Yeah. Unless that asteroid comes through and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll have to look at the the line of succession to see who the next possible queen be. But um, yeah, I, I not saying I'm gonna uh, stage a coup with a, an asteroid. But what has to happen, you think, <laughs> for you to be in line? Like, how many billions of people <laughs> need to be put out of the way for let me, you to let be me queen? Let me look at my ancestry DNA results we and do, see where I fall. We are life. both Lord and Lordess of. Uh, the Scottish Lord Castle. and Lady. Whatever. Lordus. Lord. And um, yeah, I'll have to look at my DNA results to see uh, where that puts me in line. Or it could just be like an episode of um, uh, Battlestar Galactica where the only person left is the school teacher. So. Yeah. Madam w- President. What a real hero. Um, all right. So the next one is uh, from Baba Vanga. So this one is around a solar storm. Um, you know, I was just going to mention. Yeah. Because uh, I, I do like enjoy the astronomy and I it's one of those like hobby interests that I mm-hmm. just kind of like dabble in, but I like, don't really know too much about. Yeah. That's me and weather. You, <laughs> you have like five apps on your phone. <laughs> when it. No, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> um, I was going to say that the previous one, I was like, that could be one of the solar storms that are mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. en route because yeah. the sun um, apparently is going through one of its larger shots <laughs> and, and that it might, we might see a little bit more, you know, more action. Still have never seen the Aurora Borealis and I would love that. That's on my bucket list. Um, but, you know, if we're lucky and this happens, we should see a pretty good, uh, you know, aura there. So Baba Vanga predicted in 2023 there would be a solar storm that would destroy uh, y- y- the Earth's magnetic field, if you want to call it that. Um, and so obviously solar storms would cause blackouts and communication failures. Uh, the most you know, recent or dramatic example we have of this is like kind of recent um, in history, maybe not in American history, but uh, world history. Um, So it was 1859 and it's called the Carrington event. Yeah. Didn't um, like power lines like start on fire? Yeah. So it was named after British astronomer Richard Carrington, but it knocked out telegraph networks, uh, caused fires, electric shocks. Uh, and if that happened today, no one would be able to drive their electric vehicles. Um, which, just kidding. I That's like the least of our problems. Um, I it, Like we wouldn't be able to live normal lives or anything close. Just think of how much we rely on electricity. But we'd have the most brilliant night skies again. <laughs> yeah, that would be a bonus. How long um, do you think it would take them to bring it back on? That is uh, a great question yeah. because experts, who the fuck these experts are, I don't know. Are you an expert in like like potential apocalyptic events? Are you a It's just called having severe expert? anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> Um, it would be years that there would be blackouts. Um, wow. so 
think of how quickly uh, society would dive into just absolute chaos without any electricity. Um, And I did have a, a giggle because one of the articles that I read uh, said like, oh, financial markets would go into a tailspin. Bitch, no one's going to be able to figure out what the Dow is even at if there's no electricity. (laughs) So that's the least of our concerns. Um, But tying into that on the astronomy side of things, Nostradamus had a prediction that the light of Mars will go out. That doesn't make any sense. What does it mean? doesn't make any sense. I don't know what it means. So it's actually part of the same quatrain that has the prophecy of like the seven month great war. So maybe it's that the conflict and the dimming of, you know, everyone going to Mars. (laughs) Well, Mars is the god of war. Mm. Oh, interesting. I didn't put that together. The light of war will go out. The light of Mars will go out. I'm going to think on that a little bit think more. about that one a little bit. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, that's interesting. Oh, Ooh, I like that. Um, the next one is from Baba Vanga. And this one kind of hit me hard because I actually just read an article uh, that I have linked in the show notes if you're curious. Um, but I just read this article maybe a couple weeks ago that talked about a, th- a theory in here and it was not comfortable. It was very uncomfy. Um, so this one is a change in Earth's orbit. Um which is not great if that (laughs) happens. So if there was a shift in the Earth's orbit, there'd be a huge impact on our climate. So for example, if we moved closer to the sun, uh, temperatures would obviously soar. And this isn't like some shit of like, oh, if you, you know, moved the Earth 10 feet closer to the sun and then you stood in the ladder, you'd be dead or whatever some shit is from your like fourth grade science class idiots. Um, You know, if you moved further away, the earth would just go into a complete ice age. Um, You know, there'd probably be a lot less light as well. Um, But even if it were just subtle, slow changes, it could have enormous impact. So for example, um, there's this theory that uh, an orbital shift contributed to the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, um, P-E-T-M for short. Uh, no these one is, are all words, and I've, yeah. <laughs> I've not heard any of these before. No one is going to be like, oh, yeah, the P-E-T-M. Um, but it's a period of intense global warming that took place almost like, you know, 56 million years ago, if so. Um, and it lasted for like 6,000 fucking years. So... The article I was talking about um, is from psu.edu in the show notes. Uh, I'll warn you, just like don't read it if you're not in a great headspace. It's depressing. Um, So, yeah, just take that what you will. Super fucking depressing. Well, I will definitely find that link because I'm in a great, (laughs) I'm in a great headspace. Things are going great so far. Um, So if there were like a radical shift that happened over the course of just even one year for whatever reasons, it it would just be like apocalyptic. Um, You know, maybe we'd have huge temperatures we couldn't deal with. And we're already dealing with pretty, I mean, it's going to be fucking like 60 or 70 degrees tomorrow. And it's like January in Chicago, which is insane. The average temps in in Chicago in January are usually like thirty to forty. Forty at most is like a fucking heat wave. Oh, forty is like I'm wearing like I mean I've been wearing shorts for the last like couple <laughs> days. I'm, I'm it's that been guy. nice, but yes, like almost seventy degrees in January in Chicago is is really unheard of and kind of unsettling. Um, so. Yeah, that's great. And uh, Baba Venga also maybe hinted that it could be caused by an asteroid impact. So, hey. <laughs> shaking, um, shaking my head. Yeah, so maybe, you know, we could all just go extinct there. Uh, I'll have to figure out what my out of office is going to be for that. Um, so speaking about a shift in our climate, let's get one from Nostradamus in here. Um, So Nostradamus said, like the sun, the head shall sear, uh, the shining sea, the black seas, a living fish shall all but boil. What does that sound like to you? Like the black sea is going to get really hot. Yeah. Living fish shall all but boil. Uh, So they're going to be hot as fuck and they're all going to die. So that's great. Um, Yeah. One of the, I mean, I think we've already talked a lot Uh, as a society about our impact of like overfishing, um, how it's contributing to uh, like a um, collapse within the ecosystem, as well as soaring 
water temperatures that are making life unsustainable for a lot of, uh, you know, species that have not been able to adapt. Um, so that's great. Uh, a lot of our commonly eaten fish species could just go extinct um, because of climate change. So great. Great. Good thing I don't really eat fish. I I really do like fish. Yeah. I really do like seafood. Yeah. yeah. But here's here's your paella. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Okay, well, you know what? It was just um the the what was that? A clam? Clam. It was staring Muscles. at me. Yeah. So I just did, uh, might as well put little googly eyes on it and say, Here's your dinner, ma'am. Anyway, so here's the last one from Baba Venga, and then we have one more from Nostradamus, and they will loosely tie in with one another. Um, Baba Venga's is actually kind of disturbing. So this is potentially an end to natural births. Um, Her prediction is that humans will be produced in laboratories. This is what Fox News has been telling me all along. Uh. (laughs) Um, So according to her prophecy, uh, governments will ban natural births all uh, human life will be required to be grown into a lab, um, which means that you could like pick out characteristics for your unborn child. Um, we've talked about this a little bit, actually, with the CRISPR technology. This is like the end of the NBA. It's like everyone's six foot five and <laughs> everyone's got a chiseled jawline and can jump three feet. I mean, yeah, if you think about it, like everyone playing soccer could then just be like a messy and then it's not interesting because you like what do you have like a messy against a messy instead of like a you know a brentford against a liverpool good team against a bad team the bad team being liverpool, liverpool of course yeah, yeah naturally that was, that was hilarious yeah thank you yeah no. oh yeah i could tell it was funny based on your um complete lack of reaction <laughs> thank you they're so they're so bad it's so funny um, no, but yeah, the, uh, it's very, um, it's very like brave new world. Mm, mm-hmm. It's very Huxley. I was going to say very dystopian. So dystopian. Yeah. We should bring that phrase back. Cause we, we had that phrase for a minute, like a couple of years ago. What? You and I? Yeah. Or like we us would, as a society? No, you and I were just calling everything like, oh, that's super dystopian. Oh, that's dystopian. Oh, that's super. Dy-. I feel like I've been saying it unironically a lot more often. Yeah. 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 Like when I saw there's a like a I think like a Fisher Price kids work from home playset and it's like a little fucking headset with a mic, a uh, cell phone, a little laptop, monitor, a little, you know, coffee mug. It's not cute. No, it's weird. Let's it's not, not normalize this. Yeah, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. All right. Well, do you want to end um on a good one here from Nostradamus? If, if the earth isn't burning, then I'm not happy. All right, so this one is uh, Nostradamus. The Antichrist very soon annihilates the three. Uh, 27 years his war will last. The unbelievers are dead, captive, exiled, with blood, human bodies, water, and red hail covering the earth. So the fucking Antichrist is coming, or he's already here. I I think we know who he is. Well, I was going to say, if he's already... I think we know who the Antichrist is. Who? Oh, I thought you were going to say Putin, but... No, oh, oh, yeah. yeah, could be. Nah, this one's a little bit more, a little bit more local. Yeah. <laughs> a little more locally grown. <laughs> Homegrown. Homegrown Antichrist here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that's it for 2023 uh, from Baba Venga and Nostradamus. Do you just pick the, like, the grimmest ones possible no these are actually the only ones that i could find oh hell yeah so they're just all fucking depressing Rock there's never roll. one that's like ever like kumbaya everyone is a friend yeah there's never anything that's like happy or at least not that these fuckers pull out from these articles and also it's worth noting like baba Venga, her shit is not actually completely written down somewhere whereas nostradamus says you could find yeah, got the, the entire yeah, yeah you can the, t- the find the entire yeah. written um prophecy that doesn't really fly for baba vanga so um yeah do you have any predictions for 2023 i predict that i will learn how <laughs> yes to yes. um 
shuffle a deck of cards like one of those cool guys. Yeah, that sounds like a goal uh, rather than a prediction. I'm predicting. Yeah, okay. I'm predicting. <laughs> uh-huh. I'll probably stub my toe yeah. on the couch. Yeah, at least twice. About yeah. three mm-hmm. more times mm-hmm. this month. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. I think my 2023 predictions would be um, there's going to be alcohol shortages um, that are impacted by Wait, what climate change. Uh, so everyone run out and get your booze now. Stock up. Surely um, you're kidding. I also predict maybe there's going to be like a big change in U.S. politics this year. Um, yeah, something the third really party like is going to be blowing up. Ground shaking. Um, and what else? What else do I want to predict? Uh, my predictions for the Premier League this year were, uh, I made these back in August, but it was uh, Arsenal were going to win the league. I said that August 1st. Uh, and that Liverpool were going to crumble. And so far, things are looking up. So those are my predictions. I'd love to hear everyone else's predictions for 2023. Hopefully they're not as depressing as um, ours. So. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm going to go stub my toe now. <laughs> Upstairs. Well, thanks so much for joining us this week. We will see you next week. Hopefully on time. Kind of. It's only Monday. So we're not actually technically late. Uh, it's just Monday night. And uh, hope to, to see you all again soon. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Drink water. We love you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, bye. Bye.